Today I'm going to talk about how to ask a really great question that gets uh, a helpful answer as quickly as possible. So the very first thing that you should do when you think you run into a problem is see if your question has already been answered somewhere. The very quickest way that you'll get help is to find somebody else who had the same problem and somebody else has given them an answer already and then you can try out what that person said and a lot of times that will fix your problem right there. Some good initial steps. One thing is to make sure that you're actually getting an error and not a warning. Particularly in Python, errors will have error in front of them and warning will have warning in front of them. Um, and an error is something has absolutely gone wrong. A warning is something might have gone wrong or something could go wrong in the future if you keep doing it this way. And sometimes you can just ignore warnings if they're not relevant to you. Another thing to do is make sure that you read through your error messages really carefully. Oftentimes there will be recommended solutions in the error message or sometimes a link to documentation with further information. And that'll be the best first place to start to start solving your problem. You can also search for the exact text of your error message. You'll want to remove anything like a file path or a file name or a variable name that's specific to your project. But if uh, other people are talking about the particular error message, oftentimes you'll get an explanation of what caused it and some solutions for fixing it. And then finally, look through the relevant forums and see if someone has already asked the same question, particularly if, for example, um, you've just updated to the latest version of a package, you might check their GitHub issues or for a product like Raza, check the Raza forums and see if someone has already had the same issue and it's already been resolved and you can follow those steps. Once you're ready to write your question, um, you need a good title. So a title will tell somebody uh, who is answering your question what it's about um, or someone who is looking for an answer to a question whether or not the problem that you have is the same problem that they have. So you want to summarize your specific problem, include useful keywords, um, but don't use things like help or problem unless that's something that's maybe in the error message. A bad example would be something like help, multiple intent, not entirely clear what is uh, the problem with multiple intents there. Is there an error message? Are they looking for you know project recommendations? What's going on there? Whereas a better uh, title would be, what's the recommended approach to handling multiple intents? So here it's clear that this person is looking for design advice for a particular problem. And something that can be helpful is just start with a, some sort of placeholder title and then write your post. And when you're done writing your post, go back and change the title so that it uh, really reflects the content of your question. You also want to include as much detail as possible. So uh, talk about what the problem is, share your code, and then any additional information you might have. Some things you want to include. How did you encounter this problem? Also, what have you already tried to solve it? So a lot of times um, someone will say, here's a problem. Someone else will say, well, have you tried this? Because the author didn't say that they tried that and it's uh, a good common first approach. And then the author's like, oh yeah, I tried that. Uh, but if you didn't say that in the first place, it's hard for someone who's trying to answer your question to know whether or not you did try something. And also very importantly, uh, minimal steps to reproduce uh, whatever your problem is. So what did you do to find the problem? Um, if you do that same thing again, do you get the same problem? Uh, and how could somebody else try and create the same problem for themselves in order to figure out how to fix it? Other pieces of information that are really helpful, the operating system that you're using, if you're using a virtual machine, that's going to be the OS of the virtual machine. Version numbers, uh, so for Raza, things like Raza, Raza X, the Raza XDK, and Python, what specific versions are you using? And sometimes there can be version mismatches, and that's a very quick problem to solve. If you've uh, encountered an error, a full traceback, uh, so that someone else can sort of go through and read your error logs and figure out what's going on. Server logs, if they're relevant, uh, that might not be included in the traceback. And finally, any other information someone would need uh, to, to look at. So um, sometimes you might want to include an entire file, like a domain file or a config file, to help someone else understand what your issue is and how to solve it. You also want to provide enough code to reproduce the problem. And the reason that you're providing code in this instance is to help someone who wants to answer your question figure out what went wrong. And a lot of times that means means them doing the same thing on their system, uh, figuring out what went wrong, and then um, making changes to figure out what will fix it. So some steps that you can take while you're asking your question. First of all, figure out exactly what you did to cause a problem. I find it helps to have a document or a notepad open and just write down all of the steps in order. 
and then verify that it's a repeatable problem. So when you do the same things again, you get the same output. Share all of the code that's necessary for someone else to do that same thing, to work through a reproducible example. And do make sure that it can be copied and pasted. So a screenshot of a code is not super helpful for someone who's trying to replicate your problem because they'd have to sit down, look at the screenshot, type out the code line by line. Um, and that's just very inefficient and oftentimes will make people not want to answer your question. If you're sharing code on a forum like the Raza forum, you can format the code by using back ticks. So on a uh, American keyboard that is under the tilde all the way in the upper left hand corner of the keyboard around the code. So you get, you know, proper line breaks and formatting and syntax highlighting. Finally, do your best to be patient and polite. So people will do their best to answer questions as quickly as possible. Sometimes things come up. Um, sometimes a question is very difficult to answer and it takes some work behind the scenes to figure out what's going on. Be mindful that there may be holidays or weekends or people might not be working or might not be available to work. So uh, be respectful of people's time. Uh, on the Raza forums, do not tag more than one person per post. That's, uh, there's more details on that in our code of conduct. And if somebody doesn't respond right away, um, it's probably because you know either they're not available they're not at work or they are working on something and like i mentioned it's a more complex issue and it just takes some time to figure out and as a final note questions that are easier for someone to answer usually get answered more quickly if you follow all the recommendations in this video you make sure nobody else has answered your question um, you write a clear title that explains what's going on you provide enough relevant details for somebody to reproduce your problem, the code that they need in a format that's easy to copy and paste and work with, then you're much more likely to get a fast answer than if you don't do those things. I hope this helps and uh, hopefully you won't need a lot of help, but if you do, now you know how to ask a really great technical question.